Hey everybody, it is Play with Ray Ray from over on TikTok, and I'm happy to announce that I have partnered with the Wired Idiot, and I'm going to bring you the same basic, easy to understand instruction for beginners, right up to intermediates, on how to take advantage of all things technical to help in your guitar learning experience. So I'd like you to check out this video, because when you're ready, this will come in handy, allows you to record your guitar and your vocals to a MacBook. All right, so enjoy. If you like what you see and hear, please subscribe and tell a friend because there's all kinds of cool things coming down the tube. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Ray, the Wired Idiot. And as you know, I like to make easy to understand tutorials about all things gadgets and gizmos aimed at musicians of all levels and all ages that want to get online but don't know how. It can be intimidating. It can be very, very confusing as I found out years ago. Um, so I like to try to break things down as easy as possible uh, for you and give you some kind of guidance, all right? So today we're going to look at something that was a huge problem for me and it's kind of confusing for a lot of people. And it's how do I get my guitar and my microphone, my vocals, into my computer so that I can record and, and then do some editing with a DAW, a digital audio workstation, uh, such as GarageBand or you know any of the many others. Well, it can be a little confusing because your guitar and your vocals take these cables in and out but I can't connect these cables to my MacBook okay so what we need is we need a gizmo called an interface so before we talk about the interface let's mention a few things about the computer itself so I went out and bought this a few years back um, just before COVID for the sole purpose of recording. And I did not know what I needed, what to do. I just saw it on TV, on that shopping network. And on a whim, I, I bought it. And it wasn't overly expensive, so that was good. Um, it has eight gigabytes of RAM. And for what I do, I got to tell you, I have had no issues whatsoever with performance. I play guitar and I sing. And I've done all kinds of recording using this and GarageBand, and I've never had any issues. I've also done some streaming um, with this setup, with this laptop, uh, using a mixer. And I found that while the audio was no problem, the video was a bit of a problem. I used OBS, and while it was okay, I was very limited in the resolution I could put out, the size of the, the video and, and its quality. So uh, I found out it was because of, um, you know, basically an average or even sub-average uh, video card, capture card that's in this thing, and thus why it was, I guess, cheap, okay? So I recommend moving forward, if you're going to do a lot of recording and a lot of streaming, I would recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM just to be safe. You'd be fine for audio, but for the video and a higher end graphics card. And I'm sure that wherever you buy your Mac, you tell them what you're going to do and they'll give you the recommendations, um, you know, for what you should have in it for hardware. Okay. So that's, that's my advice as far as your computer. Other than that, everything was just fine. Now, as far as the interfaces, there are all kinds of different ones out there. Um, every company has its own version of this. Uh, what you're really paying for really is the amount of inputs, simultaneous inputs, okay? So what this means, I have two. So I could play guitar and I could sing at the same time and I can create tracks in my GarageBand to handle each aspect of that. So one vocal, one guitar, all right? If I was a duo and maybe one or both of us sang and one or both of us played guitar as well or other instruments that we want to record, I'm probably going to have to have a third or even a fourth input. And that's how they determine the price of these things. They're all basically the same, but you're paying for the inputs. 
Now I bought this again before COVID. The newer ones have the same specs. The only difference is um, they have like fancy, colorful LED displays and things like that, which, you know, is really irrelevant, okay? So I, I also want to let you know, I have no affiliation with Presonus or Apple or anything like that. I just, I'm just giving you my personal uh, experience. One of the other interfaces that are very, very popular, is, you might have heard of Scarlet, Scarlet, Focusrite Scarlet, that type of thing. Um, and I just hear that they are fantastic as well. Um, but I have had no issues with the Presonus. In fact, I even got software called Studio One, which I dabbled with, but haven't really gotten into yet. I use GarageBand. So here we have our interface and we're ready to start putting everything together. So the interface allows us, as we mentioned earlier, to take these connectors from our guitar and our vocals and eventually get them in to the laptop for processing, okay? But the first thing we have to do is we have to connect the box to the laptop. And of course, when I bought this, this was the connection. A basic, I call it a standard USB. But that year, of course, they took the USB slots out of the MacBooks and they replaced them with USB-C. So this would not fit into my laptop. So I had to go out and get what they call a hub. I got this on Amazon. It's approximately, uh, I think I paid about 40 or 40 bucks for it, that type of thing. It gives me extra regular USB slots, gives me uh, an HDMI out, it gives me ethernet in it gives me a few card readers it's kind of a handy little gizmo and unfortunately in this case it's necessary so what we do now is we take our interface connection and we plug it into our hub and if you noticed a little blue light came on so now it's powered up so this is like think of it as a condenser mic in that um, there's no on and off switch but you activate your phantom power on your mixer and it drives the microphone. So that's what's happening here is we're getting power from the laptop to fire this up, okay? If you're using an iPhone or an uh, iPad, when you first plug this in, and again, you will need a, a, a little adapter, okay? It's called a, an Apple camera kit, and it allows you to plug a USB into that kit, which then goes into your lightning port at the bottom of the phone or the iPad. Don't be alarmed if the light doesn't come on right away because sometimes it just takes a few minutes for the iPad to put some power into this thing for whatever reason. So when I first tried it on my iPad, it didn't work. But here, here I am panicking and then three, four minutes later, boom, my light went on and I was in business, all right? So we now have our interface connected to our laptop. And a quick tour of the interface will show us, as we've already talked about, we've got two inputs. We've got a phantom power button for condenser mics. These knobs up here, we have a main output volume, and that is only comes into play if we have something going out of the main outs in the back. We have MIDI in and out, which we're not using. We have our headphone jack, and we have our USB connection, which we are using. So that main toggle here, that knob, we, we don't need to use that. So our headphone knob is here, and that obviously will um, dictate the volume in our headphones. And the jack is a quarter inch headphone jack. So if you're using earbuds or your headphones are the one eighth inch, you'll need an adapter and it should be stereo. And you'll plug that into there and then your buds into that, all right? The knobs here, uh, these are your gain knobs for channel one and two, one and two, one and two, okay? I've got them set to my last recording project, so they're going to be pretty accurate when we get into GarageBand. And this one here is your, like, your pan. So on a mixer, you can pan the channel left and right to come out of one ear or the other. So in this case, if I pan it all the way left, I'm only going to hear what's plugged into one, which in my case will be vocals. And if I pan it all the way here, I'll only hear the guitar because I have that in the 
uh, two, all right? So I keep mine in the middle, right? So that's really all there is to that device. And we simply take our instrument and our vocal cable. So we'll do, remember, vocals one. There's our XLR cable. And then my guitar will go into two. So now we are completely hooked up, ready to go. The only thing left to do now is to open up GarageBand and make sure that every the Mac and the GarageBand is reading the input from our interface. So we'll open up GarageBand and we will, there we go. All right, so this is the last project that I was working on. We'll get rid of that just to make it easier. Uh, we'll close that. And here we go again, new project. Okay, so we're going to choose. Now, before we do that, now, this is a GarageBand thing, but I'm sure every DAW works the same. There'll be an area that asks you some questions. What's the key signature? What tempo is the song? Uh, the relevance is that of that isn't overly important, but if you're going to do things post-production, like um, you want to change the pitch of a song or you want to change the beat or tempo, it uses this information. If you want to change the key or whatever, it uses that information as the base information. But very important down here, it says input device and output device. So right now we see that it's audio box in and audio box out. And that's what we want. If you don't see that there, it could be in one of these boxes. So you want to look for those. All right. Uh, but in this case, it has detected as it usually does. And we're good to go. Okay, so I select new project, choose, and it will open up this box, which says, what do you want to do? All right, so keeping in sort of one, two in that whole left to right thing, uh, we'll start off with our vocals. So we want to use, we want to connect a microphone. So we hit that, we hit create, and it sets up a track for our uh, microphone. And as if you look at the line, as I'm speaking into the microphone, ha, ah, yeah, 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 right? Um, you'll see that it reacts accordingly. Now, down at the bottom, we double check that the input is one audio box. So we know that it's reading this. And now we're gonna set up a new track. And this one, we're gonna choose guitar. So this will be number two. And to verify that, the one that's highlighted is what the information is relevant to down at the bottom. So we've highlighted our guitar and it says number two, audio box. Perfect. If it said something else, we want to use the drop down menu and select audio box from that. So now we are ready to go. We are ready to record. Okay. So I, I hope that this has made things a little easier for you and it sort of explains things. Uh, in the future, we will put together a little video on basic functions of GarageBand. Um, but for now, we just wanted to show you what you'll need and how to set everything up to get you to this point. All right, so once again, if you have any questions or comments, let me know if you have any, um, uh, say requests for future gizmo videos of course i'd like to know and if i can i will definitely put something together for you in the meantime thank you for watching and i hope to see you again